Good morning, ladies. Good to have you here for calculus today. What we're going to do is get into our first note card today. This whole system of material that you have is called the note card system. And it was invented by a teacher somewhere in North Texas, and it was updated by another teacher whose name is Stacy McMullen. And the whole note card system has been improving and evolving since then, and still is improving and evolving even to this day. And so what these are, these note cards, are step-by-step -step things that will get, get things, cover the whole material of calculus. And so the first one we have is limits. So let's talk briefly before about what limits are. Now, last year, we talked about limits. We'd have the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x, and we'd say that would come to some kind of a value, whatever it was. And actually, I'm going to call that value capital L, whatever it is. And we would call this, what would we, what would we call this when we have a, um, when we have a limit as x approaches infinity or, or limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x. What do we call this thing? Okay, what we do is we call this thing the value of the horizontal asymptote. That's what we call it, right? Remember we talked about that, we talked about, what do we talk about, the thing that helps us remember what the horizontal asymptotes are? Say that, what, what it's called again? Horizontal asymptotes. Horizontal asymptotes, what did we use to figure out what that was? We called it, we had a little thing with three little words starting with B. Okay, I'll tell you what they are, Betsy Bobo Botu. Yeah, do you remember Betsy Bobo Botu? I've never heard that before. Okay, you remember that a little bit? So yeah, we didn't talk about it very much, but some of you remember a little bit. We're gonna come back to that. And so we find a limit. And what we're gonna do in calculus, the key thing is not as much limits to infinity. What we have is we are interested, remember we talked about uh, the roller coaster thing that Kenzie put up there, where she had the little thing there, she found this. Remember she drew, does that look like Kinsey pretty much? Yep, that's kind of sort of. Yeah, it does. Be right at the edge. Anyway, what you're doing is you're trying to find the slope of this, and what you do is if you start out with two points like this, you find this out, and gradually you come closer and closer, then you pick two points that are closer, and through the limiting process, you eventually come upon this when the when this distance goes down to zero, then you're right at that at that tangent line, it just touches that curve. That's where we're at. And so we're interested in a limiting process. And for that, we have the limit as x approaches, we will say some value here, some x value a of f of x, and what that value is is called the limit. And also by the limiting process, another thing we do that's important about limits is, is uh, I think Karina drew this, or drew something like this. Actually she drew it uh, like straight, but if you have like between A and B, what you're doing is you're trying to find the area under the curve by, by what you do is you, you draw a rectangle and you can estimate the area by drawing rectangles and what's going to happen as the skinnier and skinnier these rectangles get, you will, if we make them infinitesimally thin, what we get is we get the actual area under the curve. And so it's the limiting process that gets us the exact area under the curve. It's the limiting process that
that gets us the exact slope of this tangent line right at that right at that tangent line that Kinsey drew. All right? So that's why we're going into limits. So we're going to be addressing the next few weeks limits and continuity. So that's why we're starting out today with note card one, which are limits graphically. And here we are. And, and verbally, so we're going to talk, remember we talked about p bang physically, verbally, analytically, numerically, graphically, right? Those five things. And we see a lot of them right here, don't we? So verbally, if f of x becomes arbitrarily close to a single number, L, as x approaches C from either side, well, in this instance, I put L, right? So we will call this value L. And in the example, they're saying as x approaches C from either side. So I'm changing that to C. So as f of x approaches a single number, as f as x approaches c from either side, so we're going from either side here, a little bit of delay, <clears throat> then the limit of f of x as x approaches c is l. Right? So we are approaching l. So what we would write that as, the limit as x approaches c from either side is equal to l. Now this is different because we are not going for limits to infinity now. We are going to limits to a number between somewhere between negative infinity and positive infinity. So that's the distinction here. So we're zeroing in and focusing in on the x value here which correspondingly focuses on a single y value, L, which we call L. So L is like, a, it's like the limit. L for limit is what you think. Capital L is how they represent it. So we're we'll going over a lot of symbology this year. Okay, back to the note card. Okay, so that's, that's what we say. And graphically, it's sort of like the graph I drew here. As x approaches c, then f of x approaches l. So here's l sitting right up here, and here's c. So as x limit, we call this the limit as x approaches c of f of x equals l. And then they say iff. You ever seen iff? Okay, IFF is a logical thing. IFF, we're going to put that, you're going to see this. IFF equals if and only if. So we say IFF, that's if and only if. So the limit as x approaches C of f of x equals capital L if and only if the limit as x approaches c, you see this c plus over here? Mm -hmm. Equals limit as x approaches c minus of f of x. And so what this means is this is what we call right here a, a right hand limit. I'll just put right limit. And then we're here, this little negative sign means as x approaches C from the left side. So as x approaches C from the left side and from the right side, does that approach the same value from each side? Well, it looks like it does. I don't know exactly what it is, but this is going to be the left limit. And the way I usually like to do this, if I have, can decide, I usually put this left limit first, then equal the right limit. Why do I put the left limit first? Why do you think I like to do it that way? And I'm not saying this way is wrong. Why do I like to put the left one first? Because it's on the left side. Because on the left side. Why, why do I want to do that one first? Because it's done. You know, we get mixed up. 
according to the convention of algebra, when we evaluate things, we go from left to right, right? And so, and so I want to carry that habit over to this way, just for organizational purposes. Not that that's wrong, but what you're going to find in this class especially is how you organize things. If you're able to organize things systematically, you're going to give your have a lot more chances for success in the class because there's so many things you, you get a, a, a sense already there are going to be a lot of things going on this year yeah I, I think you're going to increasingly see that and it very much builds and so Emily not being here today what is she going to have to be doing today she has to watch so I'm going to send it out she's going to see it this would be a good example of that by the way, I thought we had a good video from class last time, but I wrecked it because what happened is I didn't turn the camera off at the end of class. So it just spilled into the other class, and so I just had to had to throw away that video, but most of them won't be able to keep. How did you just cut it? I could have done it, but that's a lot of work. I didn't want to do the work for it. But, but everybody was here, and I, I think we had a good recap of it today over here. That you guys did a pretty good job. We'll get better at it. We'll do some more of that. I thought that was helpful. Okay. And numerically, numerically is with a table. And so here we have these values of x. And these values of x are approaching negative 7. Uh, it looks like from the left. And this one is from the right. So on the left, this is going to be the limit okay, we have limit, I'll call this from the left, limit as x approaches negative 7 from the left of f of x is equal to it looks like it's going to be 2.6, right? So 2.6, and the limit as x approaches negative 7 from the right side of f of x is also 2.6. And so we say, analytically, according to this, since the limit of as x approaches c of f of x equals l, and so the limit as x approaches to at negative 7 of f of x equals 2.6 if and only if the left hand limit, which in this case is 2.6, equals the right hand limit, which in this case is also 2.6. So the way I've had explained to me, like, uh, that I think is helpful, if there are two people on an opposite side of a fence who can't see each other, right? And you come up above the, the fence and your, the limit exists if and only if you're right across the fence from that person. If you're, if you're a ways away and the other way is, that doesn't, that's a limit, does not exist. So these things have to be equal, You've got to be right across from each other, or else that limit does not exist. And we're going to give examples of, of how that does or does not exist here. And we're going to go to, I think the way I had it, it's the class, is it the classwork next, right? Well, I know this one right here. Okay, these examples. Use the graph of f of x to find the limit as x approaches negative 3 of, of this right here. And this one right here is a graph of this. Now, one thing it does not, it, it isn't really apparent, but one thing that, is, that exists right here at x equals negative 3 is this right here. That's what that looks like. What do we call that thing that we talked about in pre-calculus last year that I just drew in red? What do we call it? 
Anybody remember? Let me give you a hint. You don't remember. So you don't remember. Do you remember? Do you remember this last year? Remember this T-shirt from last year? Yeah, right. So, what do we call this thing right here? We call it a point. Also called pole. Non-removable hole, and also this is a point uh, discontinuity. That's what it is. So that, that's what that's what we're talking about here. We have a point discontinuity or hole, or or uh, or. Oh, Denny got that wrong. That's that's supposed to be removable. Okay. Oh, he's going to have to make me another shirt. Okay. I will talk to Danny about that. What happened is I made a, I made an example that was wrong, and I had him correct it. So he put the wrong file on that T-shirt. Is what it amounted to. That's okay. So uh, anyway. That's what it is. So what is the limit as x approaches negative 3 of all this? What is the answer to that? Who, who said negative 5? Somebody said negative 5. Yes, negative 5. So the limit actually corresponds to the, this is going to be the y value where x approaches negative 3, in this case from the right side to the left side. Okay, very good. Uh, yes. Next, two, use the table below to find the limit as x approaches 3 of g of x. And here's, here's what it is. So the limit as x approaches 3 of g of x is equal to what? Look, look over here on the left side. From the left side, what number is being approached here? Ten. Ten, right? So, on the right side, what number is being approached? Ten. Ten. So, the limit as x approaches three from the left side of g of x appears to be ten, and the limit as x approaches 3 from the right side of g of x appears to be 10. Why do I say appears to be 10? It's not yeah, it's not complete, right? So you, you have to really make some assumptions. And so you can't see every little thing. I mean, you're seeing very close. You're seeing a thousandth off on either side. And I guess if you got 10,000th off and all that, but you can see this. So so what do we have where x equals 3? What do we call this thing? A what? Okay, we call this a hole or a... You said hole? Okay, good. Yeah, hole or a, or a removable discontinuity. Okay? Or a point discontinuity. All right? So let's go ahead. Let's go on here. To... Next thing. Okay, using the graph of h of x, which statement is not true? Do you have trouble seeing that on your paper or up here? I think it's pretty, it's about as legible as we can get it. Okay, which is not true? A. What, which one do you think it is? Which one do you think is not true?
which one of these is not true? What did you say? Okay. I heard two. I heard B and D. Which one is not true? Okay, let's look at B. B, it says the limit as x approaches C of h of x equals 5. Well, here, here it looks like it, because it looks like limit as x approaches C from the left side of h of x, that looks like that's equal to, looks like that's equal to 5, and it looks like the limit as x approaches c from the right side of h of x, that also looks to be equal to 5. And so if they're both the same, that looks like that is, that is true, which is not true. So I think it's d, because the limit as x approaches c of, from the plus side looks like that's what, 5? Well, we need to have 2 here. So this is not true, and so D is not true, D is our right answer. And all those others are true. That's one thing in the in the in calculus. There could be a lot of there could be some multiple choice questions like this where you have to just look at it and figure out which one is, is true or not true. That'll happen a lot. So next we it, next one is the class work, right? If you go over that, is that what it is? It just says homework. It says homework? Yeah. Is there one that says classwork somewhere? Yeah, it's the next okay, let's go to what I want to do is I want to go to the classwork one first. Right here. That's it, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, let's look at the classwork one first. Okay, suppose you were to graph all this and and x cannot equal two for all values not equal to two. You can use standard curve sketching techniques. So let's get an idea of the, of the behavior of the curve around x equals 2. And so here it's calling to use your calculator for this. So set your calculator for decimal accuracy and complete the chart. Do you know how to set your calculator for decimal places accuracy? I'll show you how to do that. Uh, what you do is you go right here for the second line, and you go over here to, to 4. How do you get there? Yeah. You press press mode. You see that? Okay. Well, do you have a calculator, Karina? You can land and go get her one. have seen her meeting today. Yeah. Did, did he talk about phones in the meeting? Yeah. I went to the junior meeting and he talked about phones. All right. Okay. So anyway, I quit right here. Clear. And so let's go to Okay, 1.75. So we're interested in, in, I'll show you one way to do this in your calculator that's a pretty good way to figure out what these are. I'll show it to you, okay? So you go here, it's x cubed minus 8 over x minus 2, right? So go in here, put in x cubed, so x cubed minus 8. x minus 2. So let me, I want to do this while I remember. What do you, what do you want me to do? Or what do you want to do? You got it? Okay. And what you do here is you can go to, if you go to table view, you're going to see this looking thing here, right? But what you can do is 
we're going to go to table set and what we're going to do is go to instead of auto go over here to ask you know how to get the table set you press second window and change this to ask Yeah, just independent, huh? Just independent. And then what you do from here is go to your table view, and then you can enter in 1.75 like this, and then you get you get this. Man, I really wanted a decimal one, 169 over 16. Oh yeah, that's the thing about these calculators; are really good. So 169 over 16. So you get, what was it, 10.5625? Yes. So 10.5625. And then next one you go is 1.9. So 1.9 goes right here like this. So 11, this one's going to be easier because that's going to be 11.41, right? 11.41 okay and then 1.99 and so on and then you fill this all out so I want you to fill that out does it help to do, does it help to do the calculator that way yeah. Yeah. yeah so I hope this year you're going to be able to, you're going to learn to do some things on the calculator that you haven't learned yet Okay, so let's, what are these other numbers here? What is it for 1.99? 11.9401. And then 1.999? 11.9940. And a two, let me guess, it's gonna be error, right? So I put undefined. And 2.001 is going to be 12.006. 0, okay. 2.01? Um, 12.0601. And 2.1? 12.61. Okay. And a 2.25? 13.5625. Okay, so we'll get an idea and, and we complete the chart. So that's what we see right here, and we've we've got it ourselves. So we go to the next thing that's gonna ask us questions about about what we completed the table. And right here. It says it should be obvious as x gets closer to f of x becomes closer and closer to 12. So we'll say the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 is 12, and this is how this is how it's written right here. And so it gives the informal definition of the limit is what is happening to y as x gets close to a certain number. So in order for a limit to exist, we must be approaching the same values. We approach some value C from either the left or right side. If this doesn't happen, we say the limit does not exist. And then here, these that last three lines just give us some, we've already kind of verbalized these, haven't we, as we've gone over what they are. So really, that's, that's uh, it in the classwork. And we'll get to this part of the class where, excuse me, math mentor. So here the limit as x approaches 1 from the left side. And what's the limit as x approaches 1 from the left side? What is the y value as x is approaching 1? Looks like 1, right? And what's the limit as x approaches 1 from the right side? Okay, it's from the right side. Two. And so the limit as 
x approaches 1 of f of x is what? Are these numbers the same? No. They are not. So we say if the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x, we say, instead of, instead of saying equals, we say that that limit does not exist. It does not exist has a, has a verb in it, right? Just like an equal sign. So you've got to get rid of the equal sign and put it like that. And f, f of 1, what's f of 1? It is 2. Okay? All right. Now, example 2, the limit as x approaches 1 from the left side is? What is this going to be here? That's it. That's class, right? Okay, we'll come back on this tomorrow. Thank you, ladies. Do we keep these sticky notes? No, I want to get those back.